If you've made up a song and you're strumming four strums per bar and you're singing the tune over the top, that is your arrangement. Any piece of music needs arrangement if it's got more instruments. The more instruments, the more arranging it's likely to need. You're gonna have to think about things like how many ideas you have, what, how characterful those ideas are, when they come in, how high or low they are. There's a lot to be thinking about. We'll be doing some acoustic and some electric examples and I've invited some amazing musicians who are gonna come and give their thoughts on um, how to arrange and how not to arrange. So there's five sections to this video. The first part, giving parts distinctive melodic and rhythmic shapes. Number two, choosing ranges. Number three, thinking in sections of instruments. Number four, when to introduce ideas. And finally, some ideas of where to look for good arrangements. One, giving parts distinctive shapes. Now, it's actually quite hard to find examples of badly arranged music which has been professionally made and released uh, for obvious reasons. Let me play you a badly arranged version of a very famous tune. We wish you a Merry Christmas. great arrangement. Um, <laughs> it's not, not the best arrangement. <laughs> um, it all just felt very loose. Everything is on the one, it seems. Like, and everything, it all happens at the, really quickly as well. I mean, everything happens at the same time. There's no sort of, I was, what I wanted to do was have a few seconds of kind of leaning into like, oh, who is, what is this that I'm going to listen to? And then, and it was all there. And I thought it could have been definitely a bit more interesting with arrangement. Um, I suppose, yeah, the guitar didn't have to go ching, 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 ching. It could have been maybe a, yeah, a counter melody or played the melody with the, with the singer. It, it, it sounds like it's a little bit of a kind of a, a preliminary idea, so kind of a first draft, um, because it, it's... It, sure, it, it, it's, it's simple in its parts, but sim simple can be amazing. It needs some polishing up and it needs a bit of production. Yes, it does sound like a, a demo, a badly made demo. I'm just going to play you what the component parts of that bad arrangement are. You've got the keys doing this simple pattern. Playing chords in root position. And the bass playing one note per beat, no distinctive shape. It's really doing what the keyboard was doing. And it's not far off doing what the guitar is doing as well. This time we've got two strums per beat rather than one. So they sort of sound okay by themselves. They've got the drums. The drums sound fine by themselves. All the parts sound okay by themselves. Um, it's just when you play them together that it sounds so lumpy. There's no actual wrong notes. One way that I could improve this is by giving, rather than just one note per bar kind of stuff, or two strums per bar, or playing a root position chord, I could start to give the parts more characterable shapes. So they're actually doo -doo 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 -doo, going up and down scales or having little rhythmic riffs. I could do that, use some dotted notes maybe, or some triplets. So dotted notes go bum, ba bum, ba bum, and triplets go da 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 dum, da 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 dum. That's just two examples that don't go ba 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 ba. So let's listen to our next ha go at arranging exactly the same tune. was too complicated. Um, I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to be listening to at one point. Was, so the drums at the beginning, I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. This, but then some, instantly there was a new idea in the guitar and then suddenly the, and then the guitar idea changed. 
So it was like one thing and then it was like noodling off in a... So I was like, wait, I need to listen to that. And then suddenly it was doing something else. I think maybe it was a bit too busy in some places and kind of took away from the melody. Um, there was a very strange drum fill in the, in the middle of nowhere. No one's got any space. Everyone's just adding in as much as they possibly can and not leaving room for anyone else, which is, yeah, something you learn in jazz <laughs> improv is make sure you're listening to everyone else because you don't want to just be going off on one while someone else is also going off on one. We've got these cool elements. We've got these cool instruments. Is there a way to work them so that they're working together and not apart? Yeah, maybe try taking a part out or try simplifying a part. So let's look at what's going on in this arrangement. We've got the opposite problem. Instead of having too many simple ideas, we've got too many complex ideas. The keys doing this kind of thing. Look at that. See how busy that is just by itself? not really repeating any of the ideas, it's changing every bar. The bass. It's just all over the place. Just playing so many notes. The guitar. Um, you could say that these are characterful shapes. They're definitely shapes. But are they really characterful? They're just changing all the time, so you never actually get to learn what the character of a shape is. And all together you get this really confusing sound. What about the vocal? That sounded a bit busy. Well, is it? Just mute everything else. Actually, it doesn't sound like too much. I wish you a merry, merry Christmas. It sounds way, way better just solo than with all the instruments that I've added. What we've managed to do is ruin a brilliant vocal by a brilliant vocalist, Sharice Adams Burnett, and make it sound worse than it actually is. Maybe we need a compromise plan. Um, we need something which has got more detail than the first piece, but not so much busyness um, that it becomes as confusing as the second piece. In other words, it needs arranging. The solve on something like that, on how to sort of approach in, in giving it some clarity, is to give each instrument and each part its own identity, to be really direct about, okay, the bass part plays this pattern through the whole piece for now. Same with the piano part. Make sure it's got this real identity really locked down. It knows what it's doing. And the same with the rhythm in the, in the guitar part. First thing I'm going to do is improve the drums. So instead of having all these busy fills going all over the place, just keep to a nice, steady, organised, disciplined sound. Musicians love organised drummers. Next. I improve the bass. What am I going to do? Well, instead of having one note every beat, I'm going to give the bass a tune. And I'm going to make it play as if the bassist is listening to the drummer. I'm going to talk more about how you lock in rhythmically with another section later on. But for now, focus on how I've given the melody, the bass, a, a tune, which you can hum. Bum, ba -da, da, da, ba, ba, ba and so on. Whereas that original tune, well, you could hum along with it, but ba, 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 ba. it's not much of a tune. Next thing, I improve the keyboard. Instead of busking along, as we say, I'll give it a motif. And all together, that sounds like this. We've got two characterful rhythmic shapes going on here. The bass and the drum and the keyboard. Much more space. 
Um, I'm much happier with that. It's not a masterpiece, perhaps, but it's definitely something that I could work with. I'm not even tempted to add any guitar, to be honest, but if I did, it definitely wouldn't be this strummed pattern, which just makes it really too busy. I was liking the space, so if I am going to have guitar, I'm going to find a, a characteristic shape, something that's different to what the other instruments are doing. Just two chords per bar. that, although I think I'd probably go for uh, not having any guitar at all. Choosing the ranges of your instruments or your sounds, how high or how low they go. Right, so with that example that I just played, everything's still a little bit in the same range, those keys and the guitar. Still sort of in the same middle area of the keyboard around here. Just by improving the range of the guitar, if I stick the guitar up an octave, that's created more space in the sound. I feel like I can hear the keyboard more now. Um, if we go back to that, our original bad arrangement, and I play you all of these parts, you'll hear that the bass is playing in the same range as the keys, as the guitar. So that's partly why it sounds so congested, is that everything's playing around here. But if I just move the bass down by an octave, like this, which I can do quite quickly, boom, like that, even that just adds a bit of space into the sound by moving everything down an octave. Or another way that I could make things less clear is by taking our arrangement that was working, move the bass up an octave, and again it's starting to crowd out the arrangement, too many things in the middle, much better to have the bass down there. and we're using the full expanse of the frequencies that we've got available to us. Yeah, I think that you, the more extremes, it's like the, 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 the depth of the piece. If you're always in the middle, I get kind of bored. If, if you add, if you have the extremes, the highs and the lows, you can, what's really interesting is actually you can, you can take stuff out that middle, maybe leave one thing or two things. I think space is really important, air, and where you place stuff is, is really, and, and I'm often thinking about that. So I'm much happier with this track. I feel like I could play with it. If there's enough space that I could add things, maybe I could add a little keyboard line now. For example. <laughs> um, but I could also take things away and the track doesn't fall apart. It's holding well enough together that I can just lose the guitar, or I could lose the keys. And it sort of still sounds okay. What about this second arrangement, the one that was too busy? What can I do in terms of range for this? Yeah, the problem was that the keyboard, the guitar, the bass, all lurking around in the same range. So what I would do is combine the first and the second of the tips. I would A, give each line a characterable shape, and B, I'd make sure that that shape was sitting really distinctly in one range. This is what I've done for you. It's a kind of Baroque arrangement. Um, I've got three really distinctive ideas, and I put them in really distinctive ranges. I've got my bass idea, which is this one, so on which is playing at the bass, but it's not so bassy that it's muddy. I've got this idea, which is in the middle. And so on. And the top line, I've even doubled it at the top to make it even clearer that it's higher than all the other instruments. And that now, I've got something that even though it's really, there's a lot going on, each part has its place and has its range. And this is what it sounds like.
Now, I know the word organised isn't always seen as a particularly creative or inspiring word, but I would certainly make a case that most music you like actually is well organised, even if it's improvised music. Those players are thinking about where they belong in the track all the time and sort of arranging on the fly. Um, Even really weird, really noisy music is really carefully made so that it's using the full range of the musical spectrum to its best advantage. Thinking in sections or groups of instruments or sounds. Now, you've already heard this. Can you remember where we played the bass and the kick drum? And we got them to lock together so they were working as a kind of team, um, always playing the same rhythmic pattern. The drums were still playing more decoration on top with our hi-hat pattern, but that kick drum was locked in uh, and the bass just immediately tightened up as a result of that. If you say the word section to most musicians, they're thinking in terms of string section, brass section, that kind of thing. But exactly the same thing happens with electronic music. Um, And so I've done this kind of slightly silly arrangement of We Wish You a Merry Christmas in the minor key with more electric instruments. And so on. Now, it's a very quirky Christmas track. What what am I doing there? I've got different teams. I've got the red team here on the screen, which is the guitar and keys. Um, Just doing this three note riff. But they're really disciplined, staying on those three notes. So the blue team, what are they doing here? That's the clavinet, the drums and bass. Again, really disciplined, staying on the rhythm. And the green lot, that is the synths. You've got this pad sound and you've got a little pulsation sound and they're just changing note at exactly the same time. And the fourth team is the, the vocal line and the harmony vocals, which are a kind of synth. I wish you a Merry Christmas. Okay, so there you go, four teams. And if I play them all together, there's some sense of organization about them. I'm still not really completely happy with it. And I'm thinking, how can I introduce those ideas that I've just played you in a way that you can actually absorb them rather than hitting you all at once with them? Which brings us to our next section, when to introduce ideas and when to drop them out. What I'm going to do is, rather than presenting four ideas within about a second of each other, I'm going to give each idea a time to breathe and layer them up one by one so you're almost as a listener learning how the tune goes. I'm going to start with the drums, come in with the guitar riff, um, and then add the synth line. And only then, after 20 seconds before I actually bring in the vocal line. Here we go. Second idea. Bring in the synth now. Now I feel ready for some singing. Do you get the idea? It's actually a classic trick. You hear it in a track like um, Billie Jean by uh, Michael Jackson, produced by Quincy Jones. Starts with the drumming. Then the bass comes in. Then you get that keyboard. Bap, bap, bap. And finally you hear the vocal. Um, It's a really, really good way of 
making sure the audience is following your ideas rather than overwhelming them. The other thing to notice about that little intro is that I dropped something. When I brought the synthesizer in, I just dropped the, um, the drums and bass all together when it got to this place here. Drop them. Give the synthesizer room. So you get used to that. It's a reason why intros are so useful in making music. With the songs I make, what sometimes works is having a dropout, so where there's complete silence, because what it allows you to do is place emphasis on the tap dancing of the lyric. Perhaps one of the most important things about what I've shown you here is, is the kind of less is more thing. Doesn't mean you can't have busy things, doesn't mean you can't have fast things, but Often you, you, uh, less information all coming at you at once really clarifies the, the sonic space that you're painting and allows the audience time to absorb the ideas. So finally, just some thoughts about where to look for great arrangements. So when you've got together your chords and your melody, that's only the start of the process. You can completely transform how that track sounds depending on how you arrange those basic musical ideas. I mean, yeah, this is why I admire producers so much. Uh, they're often the most musical people that I, I meet. Um, take a simple, catchy thing and then you display it in a multiple, multitude of different ways. For example, a track like Light My Fire. There's a, listen to the version by The Doors, by Shirley Bassey and by Will Young. And they're almost like completely different tracks with a different vibe all, to, all together. Um, or even listen to the same track by the same artist. Um, so for perhaps Bob Dylan or Prince or Miles Davis playing the same tunes in completely different ways. The arrangement really, really counts. And you can actually destroy a good piece of music by a bad arrangement and you can save a really, really simple, perhaps unpromising sounding um, track by good arrangement. So yes, you're going to find examples of brilliant arrangement across the musical spectrum. It could be Bulgarian folk music, it could be Egyptian traditional music, it could be jazz, which is a really brilliant place to start looking. We'll put some links in the description below for you to follow of some things that we think and some of the musicians that we've spoken to are good examples.